or you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, yesterday was a long work day, Whew. and uh, we covered a lot of stuff. Um, but there's a few areas um, where that we didn't cover. One, of course, is w- one of the things that is upsetting the, the Michael Wieners of the world is that Newsweek wrote an article about Joe Biden saying, wow, what a year. Infrastructure bill, the CHIPS Act, the uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, like all these things that were happening are are crucial. Stiff arming uh, China, holding back Russia, blah, 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 like uh, getting NATO together. He's been a very effective, largely um, under the even under the radar president while he's had some big wins. Beyond that, there have been a lot of like, it, huge wins that have just kind of, people don't even recognize the difference it's going to make. I mean, you just, just take removing lead pipes and rural broadband, that you're changing the direction of the health and well-being of the citizenry of this country for the better for decades to come. And, and again, this is one of those situations where Biden's going to show himself um, over time to be one of the most consequential presidents we've ever had. And it's driving them fucking nuts. And speaking of nuts... Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Fox and Friends. Now, Fox and Fiends has, um, I I don't know which batch of Fox and Fiends this is. Because they seem to have a rotating thing. It's usually two males of questionable testicular fortitude um, sitting on either side of a woman in a short skirt who is this close to basic instincting everyone. And the only thing stopping it is a potted plant. And that's part of the sales pitch, I suppose. Um, but apparently this is, uh, you know, obviously Newsweek has written this article and they have to push back. Grows the economy. I got it. I don't want to hear any more about, you don't like looking at him. <laughs> he knows. We- yeah. And it's one of his jokey ways of talking. We all know. He couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> He's so creepy. His whispered statements may have raised eyebrows, but leave it to the media headlines, declaring it all part. The media headlines. It's fucking Newsweek, which spends a good deal of time selling Jesus and kissing Trump's ass. Part of the president's brilliant year, they say. A Newsweek. Right. Let the body sit the floor. Put the body. <laughs> That's so true, Schmoopy. He's arguing the past 12 months have been surprisingly good for the commander in chief. Inflation is coming down from near record highs, and the price of gas has also fallen, while Biden can point to legislative accomplishments and even some major bipartisan wins, including gun legislation. Biden can also celebrate better than expected midterm election results. All true. You can't necessarily argue with Bob. <laughs> the reality of it. By the way, uh, um, uh, John Joe here, this dude right here, um, I, I've known him via Twitter for quite some time. And I was, I met him at the Boots campaign, which provides, uh, you know, like military boots for, and, and, and shoes for poor people and veterans and yada, yada. It's a, it's a great charity, but I met him there once or whatever. He is a double amputee. Both of his legs are missing below the knee or at the knee. I mean, it, it's, um, he lost them in, in Iraq, I believe, not Afghanistan, in Iraq. Um, and I disagree with his politics vehemently. We've had back and forths over time, but there are times when he has posted about his difficulties with his uh, amputations and the blisters he gets from wearing his prosthetics and that kind of stuff, where I have said, thank you for your service, and I, uh, I'm i sorry you have to go through this, and I appreciate it. Even in the context of, I I think his beliefs about Trump especially, and his more Foxian beliefs are complete horseshit, I can still give him the space to feel that way and still recognize him as a, a, as a decent person in other areas. So I'm going to, just full disclosure, um, at, the dude gave both of his legs... Um, to us, to the United States, sacrifice them and deals with that every goddamn day. And so I think it's a great opportunity to totally differ with what the fuck he's talking about without differ, disagreeing with him as an existing human being and his and the meaning in his life. Because again, imagine that shock. Imagine your deep beliefs about your country and all those kind of things, and you lose your legs. And the people that are 
conflicting with what your beliefs about the country are, are now seen through the context of you lost your legs for this. That's part of it. Does that make sense? So um, just full disclosure as we go forward in this. Biden being effective at accomplishing some of the policy goals that he and his progressive party set out to accomplish. Right. And a bunch of other bipartisan bills. There are two metrics when it comes to grading or weighing a, a politician, especially the president's effectiveness. One of them is, are they doing what's good for the country? Are we in a good place? Are things good? Are Americans mostly happy? And the other one is, are you accomplishing the agenda you have with your group of folks that is leading the way, that is kind of directing you on the... And, um, and I'm sure you're holding that up against Trump, say, during his final year in office during COVID, when we were all just super happy to be locked down at home. First one there, I think the polls say, no, he's not doing things that Americans are happy with. And we Which is, uh, did not bear out in the, that the same polls told you there was a red wave coming, and uh, the, sa the same polls that tell you that he's not popular are the same polls that you guys believe would, would cause a red wave. That's not true. So it seems fair to say that perhaps the uh, the idea that he's unpopular is exaggerated. We have polls here to show <coughs> that. Do you feel the country is headed in the in the right direction? 26.1% says right. 65.3% says wrong. And with Right. But is it because you think it should go further in Biden's direction? Or do you think it's because the Supreme Court was handed to Donald Trump and is directing the country um, for the long term in a direction that you don't agree with? Again, that 65% is not people, those aren't all people who agree equally on why the country is going in a bad direction. As a matter of fact, it largely, whenever they do these things, is split down the middle. Same thing we ran into with the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. What is is very popular right now. It's above water, but it was very much uh, underwater when it first came up. And the reason it was, <coughs> was because half the people who hated it didn't want it to exist in any form. And the other half thought it should go all the way to uh, government health care, Medicaid for all. That's not the same thing as saying it is wholly unpopular. And saying it is, is lying with statistics. That information, they're saying it was a good year for him. Well, and I've spent a lot of time working in politics. It all comes down. By the way, they, the, the plant is not in a good position. I'm just saying, look how locked her knees have to be where she's sitting. Do you know, you know how fucked up that is? What What is this angle? Is this how they just hypnotize morning viewers? Come to that Ronald Reagan question in, in 1980. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Um, well, uh, four and change, we're recovering from COVID. So there wasn't COVID before that. Um, Donald Trump is in an office. So yeah, on that metric. But obviously, you're not going to go with three years ago because we would have been in the middle of Donald Trump fucking the entire COVID response up. And the answer is no for Americans. The, the answer is no. And you can look. Is it though? Look at the midterm elections, but that was a unique set of circumstances. Yeah, you had shitty candidates who were lunatics and failures and liars and uh, and only a couple of them squeaked through. As with the Dobbs hearing, it motivated young people on the issue of a. Mm -hmm. Just the Dobbs hearing. Was there a hearing? Is that what it was? You mean the Dobbs ruling? Abortion, you're not necessarily going to have that heading into the 2024 election. Uh, yeah, you are, because to codify it, you're going to need more Democrats in office. That hi, hello, oh thanks. Thank you. I got a tea. I got brought a tea. Thanks. Yeah, love you. How was it? Okay. Okay. Excellent. Be right with you. Just one second. I'm just handing it to my girl. But you don't mind. Um, well, all right. Piece by piece. Love you. Good FaceTime. Everybody was all right. Um, I, I still haven't like, well, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah. Love you. Love you. Mm-hmm.
Plain green tea. Good times. All right. Um, yes, it was a smoochy time. A little minor smoochy time. And uh, we move on. Also, this will be 100% a referendum on Joe Biden, this administration, the failures that they've had. That being said, we, we are... Oh, will it now? Do you think by the time Title 42 is actually ended and the number of crossings drops because it will be limited to the number of actual human beings who make it across and are rejected or accepted, and that happens probably spring of next year and winds the numbers of people crossing the border down to where they were in 2016 numbers or 2015 numbers. And elements of the, the far left start clamoring about Biden ejecting too many people because he'll go back to a, a, a like the standard they used during the Obama years, for example. You, you think, what, what do you think Republicans are going to run on? Afghanistan? Pissed that we're still in, you know, that we're not still in. We're in a new era of a politics, right? It's, it's Wild West with the mail-in ballots. You know, Democrats used COVID, a, a virus, to append the political process. So, and so that's completely changed the game. So. Lisa, mm, no, it hasn't. As a matter of fact, it was the rejection of, of the use of mail-in ballots by Republicans that put them behind the eight ball and made all their focus on one day. And if you couldn't make it because of weather or timing or travel, which just happens, according to people on the right, um, they, you lost votes. You didn't allow people to vote in, in a way that fits their schedule. And that was an active choice on the Republican side. It is absolutely part and parcel as to why they didn't get more wins this time around and why they don't have the Senate. And I'm fine with it because you're voting with your feet anyways. If you're saying that's the only time of voting that matters to me and if I can't make it, I can't make it. That's wholly different than just discouraging people from voting whole, uh, you know, whole cloth. So you work in a lot of politics and polling. Yeah. So, so Suffolk uh, USA Today's poll has Biden's approval rating, right? 41.8 percent strongly disapproved, 10.3 percent somewhat disapproved, 27.3 somewhat approved. 17.5 percent strongly approved. So mm -hmm. while Biden's administration mm -hmm. is, is touting successes and he's sort of sitting in that middle ground, are things going well for him truly or are they getting a false sense of security? Well, I think um, well they also know <coughs> that they just passed some bills, especially the infrastructure bill, where in the spring more of those projects are going to come online and people are going to be feeling the effects of these things closer to the 2024 election. And see, that's the kind of like forward thinking and forward planning that may not in the middle of things get you, a, you know, the boost you need, even though he did manage because of the other stuff that he was doing, looking two years out when he first took over to guarantee these things. And, and, and the absolute, uh, you know, the, the effect of eliminating the right to choose for, you know, millions of women in the United States definitely had an effect on the midterms. But in terms of the long gain of the administration of the, of holding the white house specifically, there was there is a strategy happening from day one that says, look, we're going to do some stuff that isn't going to pay off until it's going to take a couple of years. So we need to do it immediately so that people are feeling it right as we go into the next election. And they are going to. Thank you, Shadow Woman. I think a lot of it. I mean, look, you, you can't for the gift subs. Bless you. We are so far out from 2024, right? So even using the midterm election to look to 2024 is essentially meaningless. No. Yeah, yeah, it's it it's going to be even worse for you guys. Thanks to this calmness, but it, it is irrelevant, right? We have to look at the set of circumstances heading into the 2024 election. And look, the, the Fed's raised interest rates quite a bit. That tends to take about a year to, to play out. So I don't think the economy is going to look any better heading into the 2024. By the way, she thinks that the Fed's raising interest rates is going to lower inflation. And that's going to take about a year to lower inflation. That's that's December of 2023, stupid. That's exactly going into the next. And that's where the economic impact, where they can, if they've even overcorrected, they can maybe in the spring or summer, God forbid for you guys, for the election, dial back, maybe cut a quarter point, you know, 25 basis points. And that would get fuel uh, into the, like the Dow and other things that tend to like those kind of things going into the election. These fuckers are so stupid. Election, so he's going to have to answer to that, you know? Answer to what? 
I, honestly, she just said something she doesn't even understand. That's just gibberish. It sounds profound. It's completely devoid of meaning. And so it also depends on who Republicans run, you know, what kind of, uh, a con you know, what sort of message that they're running on as well. <laughs> you think? So it will... <clears throat> Shit. It'll depend on who Republicans run in 2024 and what their message is. Why would their message be um, in question? Why could, if he's so terrible and everything's going so poorly and the American people are so dissatisfied with what he's doing, then why couldn't you just establish what the fuck you're going to say now and use and run on it for the next two years? Why would you even have to change what you're talking about? If the circumstances aren't going to change, right? Or I suppose you could run on conservative ideals or some sort of ethical standard, but that's fucking ridiculous because you don't have any. Because I think people need to hear how this person for Republicans is going to positively impact their life after. <laughs> really? So the, the what she's telling us on Fox and Friends is that it's important that Republicans run on something instead of just against Biden. <sighs> Seeing their life negatively impacted uh, by Joe Biden, but no one should ever be underestimated at all. Yeah, I think. <laughs> right. Never underestimate Joe Biden while we sit here and underestimate him. And as a matter of fact, actively do so. People need to understand when they're when they're summarizing a year. This is a four year mm -hmm. term. Gas prices are going to creep one way or the other, and I hope they get really good, and I'll give him credit if he takes action to get them there, but I'm not... He already has taken action to get him there, stupid. Even before it plays out, that's the whole point. That's the issue at hand. Also, do you think these dickheads... Uh, one of them has to be thinking he sold oil from the Strategic Reserve at 100, uh, somewhere between 96 and $120 a barrel and he's buying it back at 72 to $76 a barrel. Making money and lowering the deficit in the process. As a businessman, if Joe Biden was a Republican businessman and he did that very thing with private holdings in oil and gas, these, these fuckers would be, they would, they'd be trying to like, force him to run for president. There would be a draft Joe Biden as a Republican uh, presidential candidate. I'm not going to forget who put them where they were. I'm not going to forget if I own a landscaping business and I put gasoline. Oh, you mean like Four Seasons Total Landscaping? That one? Just I'm just spitballing. On every, in every tool I use to do my business. and I Then why aren't you using some rechargeable ones and saving yourself some money? I mean, in California, you, I don't even think you use gas leaf blowers anymore, stupid. I lost that business over the summer because I couldn't afford to run those tools. I'm not ever going to forget that. <coughs> Are you going to forget that we just came out of COVID? Were you not going to, um, were you in 2014? Were you not, I guess you're not going to blame Republicans who had created policies that led up to that no or i suppose don't be mad at opec don't be mad at uh at russia don't be mad at um the the world of like under the table oil transfers better to be angry in your own country at your own leader for stuff that he only marginally has control of as quickly as possible when he gets ready to run again i know he's the guy that could put me back there again and so i think but he might be the guy that got you out of it because the rest of the world put you there. We did, we did have COVID. You do remember that, right? We're not just going to, we're just going to pretend that didn't exist. Is that how the Republicans are going to legislate from now on? I mean, obviously they're going to do it with pandemic response. They're never going to prepare for a pandemic ever again because their own followers think that means they're planning to carry out a pandemic. People need to understand, um, I will always applaud a leader of our country for doing the right thing or doing something that helps us. That's not true. It isn't. Joey, it's a lie. You're lying, dude. And this is coming from a guy who's congratulated and uh, 
uh, appreciated you at different times for different things when he's gotten like jobs and other stuff and uh, wished him well during like just tragedies he's had to go through. It, that's a lie. He's lying. There's, there's no point. I don't think I've ever seen his Twitter feed where he's like, I think it's smart that he sells some oil out of the strategic reserve right now to help uh, Americans in this particular situation. So it lowers the cost of uh, oil because it's very little thing. They're very, there are very few things that a president can do. And that's one of them. Did he congratulate him? No. Is he going to congr congratulate him for buying it back at a at cheaper than he sold it? No. Would he do it if it was a businessman? abs of fucking lootly But when the posture of all your policies seems to appease one All your policies? One subset of Americans that has- Or, um, I, and by the way, I don't know why he's insisting that Republicans would like us all to drink out of rotten old lead pipes or why he thinks that only Republicans, uh, uh, that all Republicans are against rural broadband or fixing roads and bridges and airports. Um, I, 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 honest to God, I, maybe, maybe it's a Fox thing. Maybe they only pay attention to laws that passed that are social in nature. And so they can freak out about those things and ignore anything with a material impact, like an infrastructure bill. And, and of course, fucking off the bipartisanship in a lot of these things. <clears throat> also, isn't that guy over there making the uh, Illuminati hand gesture that they freaked out about when Obama did it, but when Trump does it, it's okay? It's one group of ideals like climate change uh, or uh, what we call woke culture. Um, I think a lot of Americans are going to look at that and say, we want something different. So what's, uh, what's woke about an infrastructure bill? What's woke about the CHIPS Act? Let's start there. Joey, what's what's woke about the CHIPS Act? Explain that to me. Anybody on this fucking panel. The CHIPS Act by itself. Singularly, the biggest pushback on uh, Chinese hegemony in, uh, in technology and economics uh, that any president has done probably since they opened. Since the opening of China. What? The single biggest pushback. Explain to me how that's that qualifies as woke. He has two years to figure it out. Republicans, please get. Yeah, you're. you're I don't know what you're going to ask, but it's not going to happen. Yourself together and. Yeah, it's yeah. That ship has sailed too. Learn how to go out and find your voters, get them registered, and win these elections. George. Yeah, they know how to do it. They just refuse to because that entails vote by mail. <laughs> And uh, voting early and the this idiot in the middle just told them that that's a terrible idea and it's how Democrats steal elections again. This is, you do realize that your front runner for next time is is going to scream about mail in voting and not trusting it and try to shut it down the entire time. And you're going to have a presidential election if Trump is the guy and he's not going to be. But if Trump is the guy, he's literally going to keep a large swath of Republicans from voting in 2024 by telling them, you know, not to do it early. And it's going to have the same impact that it had on the Georgia Senate races, uh, you know, two and a half years ago. Georgia right. should have been a Republican way. I'm Steve Deuce. Georgia, sh wait, say that again, what? Get them registered and win these elections. Georgia right. should have been a Republican way. Um, yeah, none, none of them are going to be Republican waves, dum dum, because um, your leaders specifically have told people not to trust voting Re over and fucking over again. Magoo. And it's not going to stop because Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's in Georgia and Carrie Lake and Donald Trump, who are affecting the national politics of the Republican Party in a really bizarre way and have fuck all to show for it, um, are going to drive a huge swath of voters away from the voting booth. Republicans. And again, I want Republicans to vote because I want them to believe in that arena as a way to deal with their political wants and needs and feel like if they, they at least had their say, if they lose out, at least they lost fair and square. But when people stop voting, that's when they start picking up guns. And that's what Trump and Kerry Lake and their ilk are increasingly causing. Now, do I believe it'll be a civil war and a, guy, a large group of people? Fuck no. 
No. But you don't even need that. You just, there's a, you know, it's the lone wolves we have to worry about. And that's all they're going to do. Magoo! Uh, the, seriously. The Re Republicans are, are going to just foment lone wolf, like, loner psychopaths into shooting up random malls and post offices and federal buildings and shit like that until there's a ground swell of Republicans pushing back and saying enough is enough and they just go, we need to throw Trump in jail as a lesson to these other motherfuckers that nobody's untouchable if you're going to foment violence um, because it's going to destroy their party in the process. Because it's not going to wreck Democratic voting prospects. It isn't. The, it, it, the interesting thing is the forward party or any third party bullshit that goes on from this point forward is going to damage the Republicans more than anything else. Because you got the QAnon lady that we saw earlier in the show who, you know, has quit QAnon. She's not going to vote. I'm not even sure she did in the first fucking place because Trump wasn't running. So she only voted in 16 and 20, but she's not going to vote again. She's not going to vote in the primaries even because she's going to think it's rigged. And when Trump runs, she's like, she's not going to run. You know, she's not going to vote for the same reason that she may have, I, like, we can't even know. But if she, she may not have even voted in 2020 thinking it was already going to be stolen. So why go stand in line on the one day Trump tells you to vote if it's not going to work anyways? They are, the Republicans are single-handedly gutting their get out the vote system and to the detriment of us all. It endangers people's lives because if you don't feel like you can be heard, you, that's when shit gets drastic. And that's my, my only, like my primary concern, not my only, but my primary concern about this kind of shit is that when people feel like they don't have another option, they that's when you start hearing these dickheads clamoring about Second Amendment solutions and stuff. Again, it's not going to come in a number that's going to change the direction of the fucking country. It isn't. I got news for you. It's a, it's a, it's a failed uh, attempt no matter who starts it and when. They're never going to kick this off. And they've been trying forever. Little pockets of like militia groups and KKK crowds and fucking Timothy McVeigh and Charles Manson. All these fuckers over time have been thinking, ah, today's the day. It's not. It's not. The number of people you would have to convince to get on board with something like that to make it actually successful are never going to buy in in this situation. They're just not. And so it will always be these dust up, horrifying, you know, minor terrorist attacks that kill innocent people, destroy property, and waste everyone's fucking time, start a news cycle where everybody clamors about it for months and months, and then it dies out and people are watching sports again. Except for the people who lost their families because some dickhead decided that uh, you know, like shooting people was more important than voting. It's fucking not going to, but again, it is not going to happen. There is not going to be a civil war. There's not going to be, a, you know, a, a, an uprising of any measure. No matter how, like, dickheads like this uh, wish it would happen so they can just, like his dad, take credit for 